just got out of Avengers Infinity War. I got zero. This is my vlog thoughts on the movie. I'm going quick and dirty, and I'm trying to go spoiler-free. So this is going to be a shorter episode. But anyway. So, if you've... First thing i got to say, if you've read the comic storyline, you are coming into this knowing a bunch of what to expect. Now, a lot of the players in the comic storyline have not been introduced to the story yet. We've been teased in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, like um, Adam Warlock, but they are not in place here yet. So, but a lot of the fundamental concepts of what's going on here are in place. The Our protagonists are trying to stop Thanos from getting all the stones to form, to do activate the Infinity Gauntlet, which you could then use to wipe out half the life in the half of all life in the entire universe and all of creation. And that is the driving thrust of the story. And that combined with stuff with the current status quo of how things are at the end of Civil War and um, uh, and Thor Ragnarok and all that other sort of stuff. Half of the... Uh, or like, like the Avengers, half of them are sort of on good terms with um, the government, but not really. It's not even half. It's like at the end of Civil War, it's like it, it's Iron Man and War Machine pretty much at that point. Um, Spider-Man, but he's not a, probably an Avenger. Um, Cap and his team are off someplace. And Bucky is in Wakanda. And Thor and Loki and Hulk are in space and all this, that, and the other thing. So, that's kind of where we are in the status quo at the start of the film. And basically, the big plot of this is getting the various chunks of the band together. Whether it's um, getting with the Guardians of the Galaxy, um, with getting Tony work teaming up with, um, with, with with the various New York heroes like Doctor Strange and that sort of thing, the ones who are actively still in the New York area. Um, you have Caps and his team of, they don't call it this, but they're his, his team of secret Avengers um, off doing their thing and ultimately things on Earth kind of coming together in Wakanda and coming together in space on a planet, which not to get too much of a spoiler here, like this, this is the most of a spoiler I want to get. The Titan, uh, Thanos' homeworld, and so that's kind of where the two axes of this story go, and it makes for a really engaging story and really engagingly written film. And my worry coming into this was that in this movie, people are going to fall through the cracks. That we're not just juggling the Avengers here. We're juggling the Avengers plus the Guardians of the Galaxy. And all these various personalities and all these plot motivations and all these antagonists are people going to get short shrift. And the answer is no, not really. Thanos is supporting cast who get a little underutilized. His new uh, minions, not minions, but his new support group's the wrong word, his enforcers. His, the the being, beings who carry out his will, who are in the position that Gamora and Nebula were in the past. And they are, their motivations are basically fanatical devotion and loyalty. Thanos, but the rest um, and they don't get much more in depth with that but the way things are set up particularly with the little glimpse we get of Gamora's backstory, you don't necessarily need it um, and you, you have a sense of what they're coming from what their backgrounds were and that there but for the grace of God or Kevin Fahey, or rather actually to be more accurate there, but for the grace of Jim Starlin, w would have gone or had gone um, Gamora. 
and by the and by Jim Starlin, by the grace of Jim Starlin, I mean writing her original backstory as being the daughter of Thanos, the Man Titan, and um, who turned on him and sought to overthrow his desires to balance the universe and that sort of thing in the comics. But yeah, all the yeah, there, but for a variety of factors, goes Gamora. Could have been, would have gone to Gamora in the past. So their motivations are not deeply wrought, um, explained, but you buy it. We have enough other stuff going on that it makes sense. And as far as the rest of the product goes, by getting the spoilers, again, I'm trying to say it's fully spoiler free because this is, I'm recording this on the Thursday of opening night. And so Patreon backers are going to get this the following Friday. And this is supposed to go live the Wednesday after it opens. So anyway, all of that aside with um, Thanos' minions, the rest of the cast manages to work together incredibly well. Um, we have amazingly, hilariously funny bits with Thor and the Guardians of the Galaxy, complete with callbacks to the classic running joke, which is also carried over to Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. about Thor in his dreamy arms, um, and with how Star Lord reacts to this, we have like uh, <laughs> I, I like this. The, the rest of the cast, I'll do correct this. The whole, all of the scenes that Thor has with the Guardians are great, and I hope when all of this is said and done, and we have gotten through this, the Infinity Gauntlet saga. So the, the, we're, we're getting a second film and it's going to wrap this up. We're not getting all of Infinity Gauntlet in just this one film. After Infinity Gauntlet, I hope we get at least one more movie, which is basically just Thor and the Guardians team up. Whether it's a designated Thor film or whether it's a designated Guardians film, I don't know. I, After seeing the wonderful comedic timing that Chris Hemsworth has with uh, uh, Thor Ragnarok, I really want to see James Gunn write Thor. Right? James, write Thor and direct Chris Hemsworth. There's that. Other bits, uh, action scenes, I mean, the Russo brothers demonstrated their tremendous aptitude for directing action scenes, both in terms of just regular, just regular fight scenes, like more conventional fight scenes, like from uh, Civil War to, well, not Civil War, but from uh, Winter Soldier to superhero fights in Civil War. And now we're getting these big epic pitched battles here. Some of them we've seen glimpses of the trailers with the forces of the um, armies of Wakanda against the invading armies of Thanos to we even get like really great space action stuff here, which gets does a tremendous job of giving a good sense of scale to space while also having a strong sense of the power of the people involved in these space stuff with, with people acting and doing stuff out in space. I want to spoil this excellent sequence, but it's, Really well done. Um, additionally, and oh man, um, there are plot threads which had been dropped from several pre previous um, Marvel Cinematic Universe films that are picked up here. Not, I will say... Not the Pym, not the Hydra has Pym particles one from uh, Ant Man, but I think that's get that one's getting picked up in uh, Ant Man and the Wasp. But a lot of these other plot threads and concepts are uh, picked up here, and there are characters who dropped out for a while, who you thought you thought oh they forgot about them they're never gonna come up again they. They've come back. That they come back here. Maybe not necessarily for a long time, but for enough to, to give you a glimpse of, oh, that's what happened to that guy. 
and give you an idea of, of the story that happened there and with those characters and perhaps a story that may come in the future. Let's see. So should you go, so I saw this movie in 2D. And from how the film is shot, I'd say probably the 3D effects really kick in some depth of field stuff, probably with this in particular with space. I noticed that depth of field stuff tends to get more interesting and get more involved with space stuff because you have, you can establish a wider, my hands up, you can see it, see them, a wider depth of field back there. I, I'm actually putting one hand toward the camera, so I'm doing the exact opposite. So a further depth of field, a further, in particular, the contrast of foreground and background, because you're in space and things are further apart. Because space is big, really big. As Douglas Adams said, you may think it was a long way, um, to paraphrase Douglas Adams, you might think it's a long just way down the street to the far, pharmacist, but that's just peanuts to space. So, the depth of field stuff is probably going to stand out most in space. Outside from the rest of the film, again, this is, if you're expecting everything to be wrapped up in the Cohesive Hall and then Avengers 5, no, this is 3, um, so Avengers 4 is going to be tying up a few loose ends from that and then setting up a new status quo. The next film is no matter what going to be setting up a new status quo. We have a bunch of people saying they're they're done, they're leaving. But as far as the next film goes, uh, Avengers film goes, it's not the same new status quo, but it's not like this. Like this film leaves a lot to be picked up by the next film. So the film doesn't entirely stand fit alone on its own. I know it means in the sense of all the, the long-standing history of the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but I mean this in the sense of the story is not done here. This is definitely a to be continued. They don't put it to be continued on screen. I would kind of not complain if they had, but they have that moment there. This, this moment at the end, like, oh, oh, we are not done. We are certainly not done. But where do we go from here? And if you can't wait for Avengers 4, or if you want to watch them all together in one chunk, you're going to have to sit around and wait for a while. So, you, Or at least you'll be disappointed coming in here and saying, why didn't this wrap everything up in a nice, neat little bow? So there is all of that. So as far as the question of the film, please talk amongst yourself in the comments below. I will stick my head in every now and then and give some thoughts. I asked as what the intent is that this film or this review will be coming out on Wednesday, May 2nd, that since the film would have just come out, please give no further spoilers in the comments than anything I've gotten into here, and certainly nothing that's don't go beyond material and trailers and that sort of thing. Um, I will, like, I will, if someone's like, getting aggressively spoilery, I may have to hide comments. At least wait for until three months after the movie came out. So, let's go August. So, by August, you should be having like, digital copies of the movie out. DVDs and Blu-rays and that sort of thing. Go wild. By August 2nd, go wild. Before then, hold it back a bit for the people who are having a chance to see it in theaters, either first run or second run theaters. But other than that, my recommendation is go and see this film. Um, in 2D, it's fine. I probably wouldn't have heard seeing it in IMAX, but that's fine too. Um, it, it's fine without it. It still holds up very well on its own. So, and later this month of May, I will, at the end of the month, I will be doing my review of Solo. Uh, so I bumped my Nintendo Power Retrospectives up and will be doing uh, Legend of the Forest for Solo at the end of the month. Instead, this will be another vlog review. But that one will be getting a little bit more in-depth on some plot beats, mainly because, in the context of my show, 
I'm also going to be getting into the backstory of Han Solo, and in particular, because we've got Han, young, a younger Han Solo and a younger Lando Calrissian, and the Falcon, get into these, get into the first of these characters and contrast them with the versions that we see in the Han Solo and Lando Calrissian adventures. Thank you for watching. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the show, please like and subscribe. And also consider backing my Patreon. Patreon backers get episodes up to one week early of this show and any future Let's Plays. Also, please consider backing my coffee. Uh, toss me a few bucks, also helps support the show, and it's not a monthly obligation or anything like that.